as I said today, we're checking our mobility. We're checking our ranges of motion. And then we do some whole body work. So we'll start with our feet. You want to work with your toes first. So I think you can see. First, we want to work with the right foot. So sit up tall, have your right foot on the ground. Your, your left leg can just be relaxed. We want to lift the right big toe and then lift the other four toes. So for me, the big toe is a bit problematic. And then the four toes are fine. So again, left big toe and four toes. Relax the leg and let's go two more times. Good, left foot. Relax the foot first. So with all these exercises, you want to relax the body and just focus on the specific joints, on the specific body parts. So big toe and four toes. Just the big toe up and just the four toes up. And again, big toe and four toes. Relax the foot, relax the leg. We're going just two more times, big toe and four toes, big toe and four toes. Good. Relax the legs, ankles. So you want to bring your right leg arm under the right knee. You grab the left bicep with your right hand, and then you place the left hand on top of the shoe. So I repeat, right arm under, grab the left bicep and bring the left hand on top of the right shin. Bring your leg up. So we just want the ankle to do the movement. So bring your foot up all around and down. So use your hand to really stop the shin from moving and just turn the ankle around. No toe movements, go one way and then go the other way. Go slowly, check the range of motion. And you can see my toes are moving because they don't have complete control of my joints. So just make sure that the ankle is the only way. Then relax your leg now that you've done your um, exercise just to see how it works. And now sit up tall and do it properly. Good. Relax the leg and go back. Grab the leg, grab the knee from, from the top and then Bring the heel down. This time we're working with the foot, just turning it in and out. Again, use your hand to push down to keep the knee steady and work with the ankle. Bring the foot in and out. In and out. Relax and then do it two more times on each side. Good. So the, the movement out is more limited always, but you should be able to control that movement uh, just with the muscles. Other leg, left arm under the right left knee, grab the right bicep and bring the hand on top of the shin. First, roll around with the ankle. Clockwise and then anti-clockwise. Then relax it for a bit. 
I don't usually relax in between. It's just because um, well, for some of you, this is the first time you're doing this. So we just give it an introduction first and then you go for the professional movement once you know how to work your joints. Good. Relax. Grab it again, bring your hand on top of the knee, bring the heel down, and then turn the foot in and turn the foot out. Again, try to keep the toes just comfortable and move with the ankle. Relax it and go once more, two times on each side, heel down. Good. All right, so what I usually do is take notes. So if you want to take mental notes or write down, we've worked with the toes, we've worked with the ankles. So how far was your rotation limited? How far was the uh, flexion of the foot limited? And how far were you able to lift big toe and then four toes? I also write down any control issues. So maybe I do have the range of motion, but I'm not really controlling the movement that well. And I also write down if I have any clicks or sounds, because I have a lot of those. So that way, every day I can make notes for every joint. We're moving to the knees. So this time you're grabbing the thigh, so back of the thigh, just to limit the movement of the thigh, and we'll focus with the knee. So bring the knee back, pick up the chest. You want to just do two thirds of the movement. So no movement with the ankle, no movement with the toes, and keep the thigh there so that the hip does not move. With the knee, turn the leg, ex, uh, sorry, the, the shin, externally rotate it, bring the leg Two thirds up, internally rotate the shin and bring the foot down. Keep the ankle steady. Come up, turn, come down, come up, turn, come down, come up, turn, and come down. Relax it and we'll go one more time. So steady the thigh and go. Other knee. Again, left arm under, grab the uh, bicep and bring the hand on top of the thigh. Pick up the leg, pick up the chest, relax the ankle, relax the toes, just the knee moving. Start with the external rotation of the shin, just using the knee joint. Bring the leg up, two thirds, then internal rotation of the shin and bring the foot down. Bring the foot up, external, and bring the foot down. Relax it. And then come back up and repeat. I had to do it one more time because I felt that my hip was moving, also shin might be moving, so we have to be really careful just to limit the movement at the joint we're working with. We'll come up uh, to a seated position, to a kneeling position. We'll pick up the chest and we'll work with our wrists. So bring your elbows onto the 
side of the body. You want to really lock the elbows there. So press elbows in and hold them there. And imagine that you have your phone on your um, forearms. So the forearms should stay, stay looking up. So I'm not going to turn the forearms, not now. Keep the palms flat, fingers together, thumbs in. Pick up the chest. And imagine that you have a phone on your right um, forearm and turn the right hand in and out. So just the wrist movement, keeping the forearm where it is. It's a very limited movement. Imagine that you're standing on the balcony, you don't want the phone to fall down. You can relax it. And then go again, just the right arm, right wrist. And relax. That's it. So limiting the, the actions that the forearm does not move, just the wrist moving. Relax it and go with the left arm. In and out. In. Out. And relax it. And do it two more times, left side. Good. Now forearms. So keep the elbow locked onto the side of the body and now keep the wrist locked and we turn the forearm down and again notice any control issues notice any stiffness notice any clicks any sounds Relax and do the other side. And relax. Okay. So this time, right arm will come all the way up and we'll start with the palm facing out so this external rotation of the forearm bring the arm up and then turn it around and take it down keep the elbow onto the body and check your range of motion so out turn it around and take it down up, turn it around and take it down. Relax and do it two more times. Release, other side. Shoulders back, shoulder blades down, checking the mobility of the elbow. So just the forearm turning around. Release it and do it two more times. Good. Good job. 
last one for the forearms. You bring the elbow in, bring the arm up, and this time just turn it in and out from this position. See if there's any differences from the time we did it with the elbow at 90 degrees. Release it and try again. Just like the queen, other side. Good. Relax. Try again. Keep your shoulders steady, elbows steady. Good job. All right, shoulders. Come to a kneeling position. Sorry, come to a large position. I have to learn my positions. Press the left knee down, press the, the, the top of the left foot down, and press the right foot down. Come up. And then from here, the uh, opposite side of the knee, that arm, comes to the side and you form a fist. And then with the arm of the same side of the knee, find a karate chop. So external rotation of the arm, palm open. And then from here, you bring the elbow, all, the arm all the way in and up. And when you're up, make sure that you're not moving through the shoulder blades. External rotate, sorry, internal rotate and bring the arm back. And forward. When you've had enough, externally and come forward. So we start with external rotation, bringing the arm forward into the midline and up. When you find your range of motion, make sure you're not flaring the ribs out. Internally rotate through the shoulder and come back, come down. You might keep internally rotating as you're moving down. Okay, release and we'll do it just two times on each side. So try it again. Karate chop, opposite arm as a fist, pick up the chest, shoulders back. Shoulder blades should stay down throughout. So don't um, move the shoulder blades, just the shoulder. Pick up the chest, relax the chin, and try it. Karate chop. Midline up and then internally rotate. So start with an external rotation. Good, okay. I didn't do it too well. But we try every time and every day we get some more control of the movement. So yeah, as I bring my arm up, I could feel that I was lifting the shoulder blade up. So really pull the shoulder blades up. Keep pressing down into the feet, opposite side. So switch the legs, opposite side on the front knee, bring the arm into a fist. Pull the belly and pick up the chest, pull the shoulder blades down. Start with a karate chop of the left arm, palm facing out. So this is an external rotation. Inhale, bring the arm to the midline and up, and then find the internal rotation as you move back and keep internally rotating. And then come up, keep that internal rotation until your limit, keep the shoulder blade down, and turn the arm around, external rotation. Release it and do two more at your own pace. Pull the belly in, keep the shoulder blades down, karate chop external.
Yes. All right. That was a hard one. Because really, I mean, as you go up, you want to elevate the shoulder blade, but you want to check the shoulder. So you want to pull the shoulder blade down and keep going. And then as you go back, you want to pull back through the whole body and you have to keep the shoulder where it is and find that rotation. Anyway, so we do it every day so that we learn how to control our body, our joints. Thoracic spine. So this is also tricky, especially if you have a quite flexible lower back. So I always fall into the trap of moving my lumbar. So make sure your hips are grounded, your lower back is grounded. And then from here, bring your hands to opposite shoulders, elbows in, pull the shoulder blades down. So shoulders together, shoulders back, shoulder blades down. But stay in this position, keep the lower belly in. And then from here, we want to roll around but focus on the thoracic spine. So keep the lower back neutral as we open up to the back, arching just the thoracic, coming forward and down. And then the other way. So make sure you're not moving the lumbar spine. Keep your chin tucked in. Then you can release for a bit, shake it up, sit on top of the heels, knees together, hips together, send the hips down, sack the lower belly in and up. You can have yourself the opposite way and we'll repeat just two good ones, two good ones on each side. So elbows in, shoulders back, shoulders lift down, round the back and find that lower back that's um, neutral, so slightly tuck in the elbow and focus on the thoracic spine moving, vortex it around. Okay, I'll do one more because I felt my lower back. So no lower back movement. Arch the upper back, the middle back. Good. And then come to hands and knees for our favorite position. Cat cow. So for cat cow position, it's very important to segment. So we start with pressing hands down, pushing knees down. We untuck the tailbone, arch the lumbar, then the middle back, then the upper back. You can pull back through the hands and push forward with the knees to accentuate the arch, pick up the chin, and then to come back, start with the tailbone. So keep your chest open, chin up. Just tuck tailbone under. Round your sacrum. Round your lower back. Round your middle back. Round your upper back. You can use the hands to push forward through the hands, pull back through the knees, and round through the head too. Okay, release it. And we'll do two more. Just do two more at your own pace. Try to really go very slow and segment everything. You can tuck your toes under. That helps me because otherwise my hips move around. I guess it's something I need to work on. So keep your hips over your knees and keep your shoulders over your hands. Nothing will change here. And start with the pelvis, go to the front of the head and then go around. Two more times, go as slowly as possible.
Good job. Okay. Practice standing. We have the hips to work with now. So you can use um, something to hold on to against. So you can place your hand against the wall. You can hold on to a broomstick. So one hand on the wall, opposite arm out, and form a fist with the hand. Pull the belly in, kick out the chest. We'll start with the right foot. So keep your foot, left leg, rounded, straight left leg. Pull the belly in, kick out the chest. We need to use our leg strength. So no hip movement, no, well, I mean, the hips will stay here and then we focus on the leg movement. So bring the right foot in, point the foot and bring the leg up, just like in half lotus. Then turn the foot, so that's at 90 degrees, open up 90 degrees, open hip, and then move the foot back, but don't work with the lower back, keep the lower belly. Knee back to 90, knee forward to 90, close, lotus, and bring the foot down. Okay. Release and two more times. Opposite fist, opposite arm in the fist, pick up the chest, pull the shoulder, drive the shoulder blades down, pull the belly in and up, reach up through the head, press down through the foot, left foot, and then work with the right leg. Good. All right. Other side. So ground the right foot down, right leg straight. Keep your hips square. Pick up the chest, shoulders back, shoulder blades down. Extend the arms. Opposite arm in a fist. Press down into the standing leg. Pick up the left foot. Bring the foot in first. Bring the leg up. Back to 90s. Open 90s and then close back. Bring to 90s, come to 90 degrees, bring the foot in, lotus, half lotus, and bring the foot in. Okay, two more times. So lotus, 90, 90, and back. Good job. Okay, now we'll just shake it off. Just shake your arms, shake your head. Shake your legs. Okay, so this is how I've been starting my days lately, learning a lot about my joints, and more importantly about my muscle control. Because when you're finding that you're not able to control the movement as easily or that other parts of you are compensating, that's a reminder to really engage and to notice what's actually limiting the movement. And maybe you do have the range of motion, but you don't have the strength to control that range of motion, which often happens to you. So to work a bit with that strength, we'll, we'll come back to our hands and knees. And we'll work a bit with um, bringing opposite arm and leg up. So press the left hand down and the right knee down. Pull the belly, push into the hands. And then inhale the right arm up, left leg back. 
Excellent, bring them down. You can notice if there's any unnecessary movements with the uh, torso. So inhale, left arm up, right leg up. And exhale down. Notice if your uh, torso is changing shape and try to hold it strong and still. Pressing to the left hand, to the right knee. Inhale, bring the arm up, the left leg up. Keep the belly in, exhale here. And then inhale, raise a bit more, keeping the belly in. Exhale, gaze under the right armpit. Inhale, stay here. And exhale, bring arm and knee down. Opposite sides. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Stay there as you exhale, push into the hand, to the knee. Inhale, lift a bit higher for the left arm, the right leg. And exhale, gaze under the armpit. Keep the belly in. Inhale here. And exhale, come down. Okay, fast movements. So inhale, right arm, left knee. Bring them all the way up. Gaze under the armpit and exhale down. Keep the belly strong. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Gaze under the left armpit. Keep the belly strong. Exhale down. Four more on each side. Inhale, right arm, left leg. And exhale down. Keep the lower belly sucking in and reaching forward. Left arm, right leg. And exhale down. And then inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Gaze under the armpit. Exhale down. Two more on each side. Last one. Keep the belly strong and keep the arms, the legs strong. Good. Okay, so you can keep the knees down or you can straighten the legs back. We're going to work with a plank position. Press down into the hands, push away, keep the belly strong. And then from here, work with bringing the right hand to the right, to the left elbow, and then back down. Left hand to the right elbow, and then back down. Keep the belly in and try to keep the hips strong. Work with your breath, keep breathing, keep the lower belly in, opposite elbow. Two more on each side. And last one. Slow movement, okay. Come back down, take a breath. So remember your knees can be down. If your knees are on the ground, the idea is that you're not releasing and you're sticking your bum out, but you're really pushing into the hands, pulling the belly in. The further you take the knees back, the harder it is. And if you take the legs all the way back, of course, it's harder. We'll do the exercise once, once more. This time you can repeat, hand to elbow, or go all the way up, hand to shoulder. The idea is that you really control the movement so that you keep the hips square, you keep the belly strong, and you bring the arm up slowly, and then back down, so it's slow motion. So press the hands down, bring the knees back, pull, pull the lower belly, push down into the hands, keep the lower back slightly rounded. And then from there, you can go to full plank and we'll start. So five on each side. Don't move the hips. Keep the lower belly in. Don't move the hips. Slow move. Four more on each side. Three more. Keep your lower belly in. Keep your legs strong and straight. Two more, keep your standing arm strong, pushing down. One more on each side, slow movements, and come back, good job. Okay. Bring the tops of the hands down. If you want to feel the stretch a bit more, then you push down into the hands. 
If you want to feel it even more, you bring some, the knees back and you bring some more weight onto the hands. Then breathe. Okay, and if you want to feel it more, shift the weight back and push down into the toes of the hands. Shift the weight forward, bring the knees forward, and slowly come back. Slowly shift the weight back to release the weight from the arms to take it away and bring the arms out. Um, we're going for one more wrist exercise. So hands and fists. I'll lower the screen. <laughs> hands and fists. Press down onto the uh, fists. And then from there, keeping the arms straight, you want to bring the arms forward so that you push the uh, outer hands the inner hands down, and then bring the hands back where they were. Bring the elbows back, so you bend the elbows here. Bring the arms forward, and then turn the fists out, and then bring the arms forward. So you can micro bend the elbows, or you can keep the elbows straight as you bring the legs forward, then bring the weight back, then you bend the elbows as we bring the weight all the way back and then back to center and then open up. Keep the elbows straight if possible and come back. Okay, go faster five times more. And open four times more. Times. Two more times. So when you come forward, really turn the fists forward. And back. And to the side. One more time. So turn the fist so that the fist is facing back. And come back. Let all good job. Release your hand down. Roll around the wrist. And the other way. And then bring the forearm to the ground, palm onto the ground. Use your right knee to massage the forearm. Release and do the other massage the other side. Now you want to come to a low squat. You can lift the heels if needed, pick up the chest and breathe here. With time, you want to bring the heels down. You can again use the hands to support you and open up the chest, pushing back into the uh, hips, open up. And then maybe you open up the feet a bit more. You pull the right belly in, open up the chest, and you bring the hands to the chest using the elbows to push the hips open. Inhale all the way up. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale all the way up. And exhale through the mouth. Inhale up. And exhale. All right. Now this one is tricky. You bring the hand, the right hand, to the uh, hip crease of the right leg. So you bring the hand all the way down. You open up the elbow out, and then you bring that left hand to the hip crease of the left leg, and you bring the uh, elbow out. Okay. So from here, what you want is to again. Push the chest forward, pull the shoulders back. If you want to feel it more, you can bring the elbows back. 
and then from there, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades back, and push down onto the feet. You'll feel the hips opening a bit more, and you want to push with the chest, pull back with the shoulders, pull the shoulder blades back. Inhale here, and exhale. You can use the hands to pull the hips to the side, pull the belly in, inhale here, and exhale, reach the heels back, press the outer feet down, pull the belly in, round the back, and move the elbows forward. Okay, elbows in. Now from here, we want to use the knees to push the elbows together. So you'll feel quite a stretch on the shoulders. So if you want to make it harder, you can bring the feet closer in. So with the feet closer in, Palms in there, elbows in, push in with the knees. You can lift the heels or keep them down. Pick up the chest, pull the shoulders down, the shoulder blades down. Inhale here. And exhale, push with the knees, bring the elbows closer together. Three more breaths. Two more breaths. And one. Very slowly, come out of it. Okay. Come to child's pose first. Sending the hips back, pulling the belly in and reaching forward. Relax the hips. Arms by the sides. Inhale into the lower back. And exhale out of the mouth. Inhale into the lower back. And exhale out of the mouth. Okay. Another good stretch before we do some uh, final lower back condition. So you want to bring the knees under the hips, hands under the shins, the shoulders, and then you open up the knees to the sides, shins parallel to one another. So keep the shins parallel to one another, and you can open up the knees a bit more for this frog um, stretch. So keep the lower belly in and forward. Now if you want to stay here, you're welcome to stay. You want to go deeper, come to the elbows. And then if you want to feel it more from the hands or from the elbows, start bringing the hips back. So knees out away, heels at the same opening of the knees. And to feel it more, bring the weight further back. So keep pushing the weight back, but of course, be careful, don't break yourself. So keep the lower body in and forward. And if you want to go deeper, if you can't go deeper, push back with the hips. Five more breaths here. Four. Three. Two. And one very slowly, start by shifting the weight forward and then heel to the feet in and then move the knees in. And come back to a child's pose. Knees together, feet together, pull the lower belly in, reach the six bones back and reach the hands forward. Inhale, stretch away. And exhale through the mouth, release. One more time, inhale deeply, reach forward to the fingertips, back through the six bones. And exhale, relax the whole body. Use your hands to pull your hands uh, forward and come to cobra pose. So feet together, heels together, pick up the chest. Now we'll do cobra with twists to, to strengthen our lower back. So these are great for the lower back as long as you're sucking the lower belly in and pulling it forward. 
If you're collapsing the lower back, that's not good for you. So feet together, press the tops of the feet down, lift the knees up. Hands under the shoulders, elbows in. Inhale, find your cobra. It can be as high as you need to today. Exhale, pull the shoulders back and gaze at your left back cheek. Keep pushing the chest forward, keep the chest proud, and exhale, keep gazing at your left back cheek, maybe twist a bit more. Inhale, come back to center, and exhale, gaze at your right back cheek. Keep pressing the feet down, glutes are active, reaching forward, lower belly is in and up, pick up the chest, pull the shoulders back, exhale, gaze at the right butt cheek, and inhale, come forward, and exhale, come down. Take a breath down. Okay, we'll do it, the exercise two more times. So feet together, press the toes of the feet down, Feel the glutes reaching forward. Pull the lower belly in and forward. Reach the rib cage in and forward. Inhale, pick up the chin forward and up. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down the back. And exhale, gaze at your left back cheek. Inhale, stay here. Keep pressing the feet down. Keep the glutes active. And exhale, maybe twist a bit more. Staying within that same line. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale to the right. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. Inhale, stay here, pull shoulder blades together, reach them forward. And exhale, keep gazing at the right, maybe twist a bit more. Inhale, come back to center. And exhale, come down. Take a breath here. One more time. Feet together, press the toes down. Feel the kneecaps lifting off the floor. Glutes forward into the kidneys, kidneys forward into the floating ribs, floating ribs in and forward. Inhale, chin forward and up, pull the shoulders up, the shoulders back. Exhale, gaze at the left back cheek. Stay here, admire your left back cheek. And exhale, stay here. Keep the lower belly in and up and slightly to the right as you're twisting through the chest, through the head. Inhale, come back to center, and exhale, gaze to the right. Keep the lower belly in and up, slightly to the left, and exhale, twist a bit more, pulling the shoulders back, gazing at your right butt cheek. Inhale, come back to center, and exhale, come down. Good job. Arms by the sides, feet together, locus pose. Chin forward, inhale, pick up the chest, the chin, pick up the legs, keep the legs together. Exhale here. Reach further back and up through the legs. Inhale, up through the chest, and exhale, stay here. One more deep inhale here. And exhale, reaching forward through the chin, up through the chin, back through the legs, up through the legs. Exhale, come down. Turn around for bridge pose. Dynamic bridge to finish. Extend your arms out. You should be able to caress the back of your heels. Show some love to the back of your heels. All right, press the feet down. Pull the lower belly in, bring the chin in. And then from here, inhale, hips and arms up. Synchronize the arms so that they touch the ground when the hips come to their full range. And exhale, bring the hips back and the arms by their sides. Hips and hands touch ground at the same time. Four more times, synchronize the movement. Three more times, keep the lower back belly in and towards the chest. Move the knees away from you to traction the back. Okay, three more. Inhale deeply as you go up. And exhale completely as you go down. Smoothen the breath. Inhale up. Exhale down. And the last one, keep your lower belly engaged. Pick up the pubis, reach it towards your chin as you move the knees away. 
and exhale, bring the hips back, upper back, middle back, lower back, sacrum, and everything touches the ground. Good job. Bring your knees in, knees to chest, pull onto the knees to reach the hips away. Inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth, pull the knees closer to the chest and the lower back closer to the ground. Inhale deeply, pull the heels closer to the hips. And exhale through the mouth, push the shoulder blades down, pull the shoulder blades towards the sacrum, reach the crown of the head away. Inhale deeply. Exhale through the mouth. Feel free to rock from side to side. Feel free to release or to stretch a bit more. So you choose whether you need to do any final movement. Otherwise, rest down. You want to feel that the lower back is long, so tuck your tailbone under. Feel the lower back kissing the ground. Allow your feet to splay out. Allow your chin to Tap in slightly so that the back of the neck is long and happy. Pull the shoulders towards the ground, the shoulder blades towards the sacrum. Keep the lower back long. Keep the lower belly slightly pulled in and towards the chest. And then inhale deeply. And exhale through the mouth. Release any engagement of the body. Allow your body to rest in stillness. Allow your body to tell you anything it might have to tell you. For the next few minutes, lie here and listen. Relax and stay receptive. very slowly. Very slowly start bringing your awareness back. Back to your body and to the space occupied by your body. Beauty, miracle that is your breath. Deepen your breath and send your breath all the way down to your toes, to your fingers. 
Follow your breath. Start to play out the fingers, the toes. Start moving your head from side to side. You take the next minute or two to move in any way and stretch in any way you want to. You'll need in a seated position one minute, so make the most of these few nice moments. Finish our practice with our palms at heart center. And bring your hands in prayer or simply place your palms there in the center of your chest. Feel the power that lies in there. Inhale from your root all the way up to the crown of the head and feel how it feels as the breath passes through the chest. So all the way down and again notice your heart center. Inhale deeply all the way up. And exhale from the crown of the head to the heart. Stay with the heart. Inhale there into the space at the center of the chest. Exhale there, stay with that power. Inhale into the heart, allow that power there to charge the whole body. And exhale through the mouth, ground down through the whole body. Inhale from your roots into the heart. And exhale through the nose, allow your head to bow down to the heart, to the power, the beauty, the light that lies there. Thank you for taking care of your health, for taking care of your body, for taking care of your mind, for taking care of yourself. The life inside me honors and celebrates the life inside you. Namaste.